Hello. Uh, welcome to our uh, sessions on uh, transmission and uh, distribution through e Sikshna portal. So I'm Professor Uma Rao from RV College of Engineering, bringing you this lectures. So today in this session, uh, we are going to look into the supporting structures of the line and uh, different types of conductors that are popularly used for transmission lines. So the material technology has improved over the decades, giving us a wide range of materials available uh, today. So this has facilitated in providing uh, conductors to withstand higher voltages and higher currents and uh, which are more reliable and can withstand wear and tear. So let us go through the session. So first we have two options. One is the overhead line and other is the underground cable. So the overhead line is what we see everywhere. You know, transmission lines you see and uh, lines going across the towers and on the distribution side, we see from our transformers to our poles and so on. So these are all overhead lines. So if you look at any overhead line, it is a bare conductor. It's a bare conductor. In contrast, we have underground cables. So these cables are placed in trenches below the ground. So I cannot just have a bare conductor below the ground, right? It'll seep into the, the water will be there and uh, it'll make it conducting. So these cables are having a insulation sheet over the conductor. You would have seen black cables sometimes being drawn in trenches near your houses. So one of the main reasons why underground cables are used is uh, they are, you know, they are used for aesthetic purposes. You don't see them hanging everywhere. So you can put them under the ground. And they don't, they don't have some ugly wires, uh, you know, hanging from uh, poles and maybe touching trees, et cetera. So faults are minimized. So the main problem with overhead lines is they're prone to faults. Birds can sit on them and short circuit. They're also hazardous to some flying objects and um, lightning prone and so on. So you don't have these issues with underground cables. You'll study more in detail in your fourth unit. Uh, however, these underground cables have some disadvantages. One is, the cable capacitance is very high. So if the capacitance is high, it will draw a heavy charging current. So this restricts the, uh, you know, the underground cable to around 15 kilometers. You can't have it for longer lengths because of excessive heating and uh, Ferranti effect you may have. You may have very high receiving end voltages. So we can't have it for uh, very long distances. Whereas in the previous session, I told you we have lines over thousand kilometers, okay? And uh, the other problem with cable is as your voltage level increases, uh, providing the insulation, I need material which can withstand the higher voltage, that also would become an issue. And the installation cost is high. And faults are reduced, but in case a fault occurs, the fault detection and localization is also difficult. In contrast, we have overhead lines, which are uninsulated electric conductors, and they're suspended by towers or poles. And they're very cheap compared to underground cables. However, these overhead lines, because they are above the ground, are exposed to weather conditions, adverse weather conditions. So, you know, in areas uh, prone to wind storms, ice, et cetera, there is always a chance that the conductor may break. And uh, you require some minimum clearance for safety, you know, because they're exposed. So I need to maintain that clearance. 
and uh, wind wind can cause oscillatory motions of the line which we call as uh, galloping so imagine i have two parallel two lines close to each other and because of wind if they have oscillations then they may touch each other causing a short circuit so to prevent that we have to maintain a minimum clearance so these are all some issues with uh, overhead lines so now uh, we will see what are all the components of the overhead uh, systems so first we have conductors supports insulators cross arms and other auxiliary components for protection so in this session we'll see about our different types of conductors and supports so the supporting structure is what simple the name itself implies which supports the conductor so basically they are the towers and the poles so these structures provide the necessary spacing between the conductors and also maintain the required distance from the ground so i i need to have the conductor above a certain height right it shouldn't be too low otherwise you will come in contact with the live conductors and uh, it shouldn't be too high because it should be accessible so there are some standards for this now these conductors they should be mechanically the supporting structures should be mechanically very strong because they are support na no? so if the support fails the conductor itself will fail so they have to be mechanically strong and uh, normally a factor of safety of 2.5 to 3 is used factor of safety means see your design value gives uh, gives you some value particular x so two times or three times you take so that it will be safe it, it is like we have a reserve no when we go out for shopping and we want to buy something so if i want to buy some, something for 1000 rupees i have some extra that is factor of safety because you the price may have gone up or you may see something and you want to buy it and so on so factor of safety is very important in engineering designs because if you uh, use the components exactly what you get in the design then even some slight deviations may result in component failures okay so uh, support structures are very important so there we use a high factor of safety please remember a high factor of safety means more expensive because when x is sufficient i'm going to use 2x or 3x so that means i'm going to invest more money on that okay uh, that is one aspect the factor of safety is a must and uh, the other thing of course as in, as with any other product we want it to be cheap and long lasting the most economical one and they should be easily available for line conductor erection that's what i meant you know the clearance from the ground accessibility all these should be planned when we uh, design the support structures so when you use poles so the poles are normally or any support structures what are the materials we can have we can have wood concrete steel or aluminium so the basic structures are poles and towers electric poles and electric towers so we will see what are the options we have so electric pole you would have seen a very familiar site right it supports the transmission lines and uh, not more than 115 kv so more than that we use towers towers also you would have seen and uh, they are made up of these poles are made up of wood concrete or steel and what material you use will depend on what is the money you are ready to spend and what is the weather condition where you are going to locate it and of course the line voltage so one of the most popular uh, materials are wooden poles though in india now they are not very common you don't see them but i there are they are uh, uh, seen uh, outside so they it's made of wood obviously and uh, it is used for short spans up to 50 meters and uh, used in uh, distribution systems so 50 meters is too short so you use in especially in rural areas where wood is easily available and it causes less flash flashover because wood by itself is an insulating material 
and they have a short lifespan. We all know wood is prone to termites, insects, it's prone to that. That is one aspect. And also whether rain, water, uh, ice, snow, all these will easily degrade the quality of the wood and its strength and durability. And wood is also not as strong as compared to, to its steel counterparts. These are the, our very familiar steel poles. You would find uh, them, steel poles. And um, you see in my previous class, I told you, you might have two circuits. So you see here, going two circuits. And they're normally used for low and medium voltages. And uh, to ensure longer lifespan, the steel pole, poles are galvanized. That means you have a coating of zinc to prevent them from corrosion. So galvanization is a very common technique of coating steel uh, to prevent corrosion and they must be earthed very important for safety and their maintenance expense is high they have to be periodically maintained next we have concrete poles these are also very uh, uh, popular and common in india you would have seen uh, many of them so they, they are heavy concrete is a very heavy material and so their transportation cost is high but they're very durable. The degradation is uh, very, very less. And so they have a much longer life and they're mechanically strong. Concrete is a very strong uh, material and their maintenance cost is also low. So concrete poles are a very good option. And uh, you will see that in India, most uh, of the places we do have uh, concrete uh, poles. Next coming to towers. Okay, so there are different types of towers. I'll just put some on the pictures uh, for you to see. We will not go into the details of the uh, tower design. So poles are okay up to 11 kV. And uh, if you have much higher voltages, and we saw that the transmission voltages uh, are very high. So more than 400 kV, we go for towers. So the towers are invariably galvanized steel towers. So they're mechanically strong and uh, they're very durable and you can have long spans between the towers. You can have long span, spans between the towers and the tower footing. So you can see here the, the, at the ground here. So this must be, they're grounded using rod type of uh, grounding um, conductors. So the tower almost behaves like a lightning arrestor. So or any lightning strikes the tower, it will be grounded. The lightning strike will be grounded. And they're very useful for railway lines, over railway lines, for rivers, over rivers, etc. Now let's come to the conductors. So early 18, uh, uh, 19th century, 1880s and all, they used to use copper. So copper is a fantastic uh, material, very good for conductor uh, because of its weight. And in 1880s, the length was short. No, we saw in the evolution, short uh, systems. We didn't have long systems like now, thousands of kilometers. But in copper lines, copper is very expensive. It's a very, very expensive um, uh, metal. So slowly, copper got replaced with um, aluminum. And uh, the first aluminum uh, conductors used uh, was in California in the year of 1895. So their aluminum then completely replaced uh, copper. So aluminum had many advantages. It was cheaper and uh, it was lightweight. Uh, and uh, since their uh, conductivity is lesser than copper, the diameter was more to carry the same current. So because of this, the corona effect, I told you in the last session, where there's a breakdown of the air around the conductor, the corona effect was also uh, reduced. So all these made uh, aluminum a very good choice uh, after, as compared to uh, copper. So then the conductors were made of solid uh, wires or stranded wires. So stranded wires, I think you, would have, you, you all would have seen, right? There are a number of thin strands. There, there are a number of thin, thin strands. A solid wire is a solid conductor. There are no strands in it, okay. Now, for higher currents, you need larger cross-sections 
and uh, this became uh, an uh, issue uh, because uh, the mechanical stability is reduced when you use a solid conductor so that is when with when when we started you know evacuating higher powers higher powers then the current increases that is when you know stranded conductors became more popular so normally in a stranded conductor you have a central wire and you have successive layers of strands around it so if the diameter of one strand is d small d lower case d then the effective diameter is given by this formula d is equal to 2n minus 1 into d where n is the number of strands clear okay. so this was the first step of evolution now when you choose a conductor for an overhead line what do you look at of course you look at the current carrying capacity the thermal performance and the current loading and its cost the tensile strength it has to withstand any tension due to wind the wind may laterally pull the wire or ice or snow or hail which may fall on the on the conductors so all these mechanical stresses the conductor must be able to uh, withstand and sag sag means i have a line so the line because of its weight will sag I think you all are familiar with the clothes line. So you tie your clothes line between two hooks tightly. The moment you hang the clothes, the line will sag. Okay. So all these things are important when we choose the material we want to use for the conductor. So as I said, first was copper. Earliest choice was uh, copper and uh, very expensive, uh, very expensive cross section area is very small so mechanical strength is not very good and uh, the copper availability of copper is also not uh, high okay so it immediately got replaced by aluminium and uh, as i told you the conductivity of aluminium is only 60 percent of copper so for the same current rating you will the conductor will be of larger diameter which will give it better mechanical strength and uh, it will also lead to reduction in corona okay and uh, but aluminium because of its weight you no know, it is more prone to sag it is more prone to sag and uh, you will have greater swings because it's uh, it is lighter so if there is a wind the swing of the conductor will be more than that of copper okay so these were some things with aluminium slowly newer materials uh, emerged newer materials emerged now uh, today a number of different uh, alloys are used in conjunction with aluminium so we will see what uh, these are so we have all aluminium conductors that is they are called as aac or these are also called as aluminium stranded conductor asc so it is made up of you know one or more strands of aluminium 1350 aluminium alloy it's called okay so this alloy has a very high content of aluminium almost 99.5 percent it has to have minimum okay so that means it is more or less aluminium with the remaining 0.5 percent additions of silicon iron copper manganese and other elements so this is used in uh, different voltage levels you can use it from low voltage to high voltage overhead lines however its strength to weight ratio is poor still because most of it is aluminium right they are new they are not used on a large scale in transmission lines and we don't normally use it where in rural areas where maybe you know you don't have a source of generation and you may have to take the wires over a long distance the lines over a long distance that means the span is greater span is the length of the line the length of the line is called the span so for larger spans we don't use this is not a very good choice but it's very corrosion resistant because aluminium is the main alloy so it is a preferable uh, option in coastal uh, areas and in urban uh, urban uh, places also where the spans are lesser urban urban places are crowded you know urban places are crowded 
so you don't have to too long a distance from one support to another support so the spans are lesser and so in such cases we can use uh, this this aac uh, conductors so they have a good current carrying capacity they are primarily corrosion resistant and a very good choice in coastal areas and appropriate for low and medium lines then you have all aluminum alloy conductors it is similar to aac except for the alloy so the alloy is a combination of aluminum magnesium and silicon silicon itself is expensive so it is an expensive uh, material so these are designed to have a better strength to weight ratio as compared to simple aac so in aac most of it 99.5 99.5% is aluminum so its um, strength to weight ratio is poor here it has a better strength to weight ratio and it has superior sag characteristics that means the sag is reduced because the weight is uh, more and this material is also uh, having very good corrosion uh, resistance and they can be used for longer spans because their tensile strength their mechanical strength is high and they are suitable for medium and high voltage transmission lines so you can see how it is the strands would be like this okay so this is what is a stranded uh, aluminum next we have acsr very very popular aluminum conductor steel reinforced so it is made up of one or more layers of 1350h19 that means predominantly aluminum wire on a steel wire so that's why it's called as a steel reinforced reinforced means extra okay the steel wires of course are galvanized or aluminized to minimize corrosion galvanized means zinc aluminized means aluminum coating to red, to reduce the corrosion and uh, they are lightweight they have lesser sag compared to pure aluminum uh, compared to aac conductors and they have a good conductivity and their tensile strength is also good so they are very popular for long longer spans you can use them for longer spans the steel the reinforcement of the steel uh, improves its tensile strength so the conductivity of aluminum is good so it is like this the steel wire provides the strength and the aluminum carries most of the conductor okay so they have a smaller sag and therefore the height of the supporting tower can be reduced see sag is what i told you you have a line and you have a line like this and when there is wind or ice it will sag like this bend you know it, it will bend as, as i told you when you hang clothes on a clothes line the line will sag okay so if the sag is high means what happens the way at, at the lowest point it will come closer to the ground so my support structures should be taller you just think of distribution um, uh, you know in 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 residential areas so i have poles all residential areas more or less have trees all over the world so if the sag is very high you know the wire will come and touch the tree itself so i must maintain some minimum height so if the sag is more means the height of the support will have to be higher that will increase the cost of the supporting structure so that's why materials with the lesser sag are preferred wherein you can reduce the support structure height and so this acr sr has that advantage and because of the aluminum for the same current carrying capacity uh, as compared to copper it will have a larger diameter and therefore uh, losses will be reduced and you have the steel reinforcement which will further increase the diameter and uh, because of that what will happen the effective resistance will reduce and therefore the losses will reduce so acsr is a very very uh, popular material uh, used for overhead uh, lines so you see this is how it would be you have a steel uh, reinforced strands and around that you have the aluminum strands so this steel provides the necessary strength and the aluminum carries the current next we have aluminum conductor alloy reinforced right it is similar to acsr only thing is there the reinforcement is steel here the reinforcement is from a magnesium silicon alloy 
So this has improved mechanical and electrical characteristics as compared to ACSR, AAC or AAAC. And there's a very good balance between electrical and mechanical uh, properties. And it has a very good uh, ampacity, that is the current carrying capacity, good tensile strength, lightweight. So all these make it a very, very attractive uh, uh, material for uh, overhead lines in the, on the transmission at higher voltages. So you see, you have aluminum alloy, okay, at the center, and over that you have the aluminum uh, 1350H 19AL wire. So the aluminum wire. So this is the reinforcement you're giving, the alloy reinforcement. Next, we have what are called as HTLS, high temperature conductors. So these, these have very low sag. And slowly, these are replacing our ACSR conductors because of the properties of a very high current carrying capacity and a low sag tension property. That means even if the tension is high, the sag is low and easy installation and very reliable and low line losses. So they are still expensive, but still now they are becoming a popular choice, high temperature conductors. Then we have uh, another material called as the thermal resistance aluminum alloy. So it is similar in construction to ACSR. And um, only thing is the reinforcement in, is not just galvanized steel. It is a combination of gal galvanized steel and a thermal resistant aluminum alloy. So they can operate at very high temperatures. They can operate at very high uh, temperatures and uh, they are normally used, uh, you know, when the power is very high. So 2000 megawatts, that means the current is very high. So if you want to say transport 2000 megawatts over a line, so that will result in a huge uh, amount of current. And I, in such cases, you need a very uh, good material with a very high thermal resistance and these uh, uh, conductors are used for that. And um, it's actually the alloy used is a zirconium doped aluminum alloy. So this makes it temperature resistance, okay? Uh, and they're economical, they're they are also economical. Uh, and uh, as I told you, they're normally preferred when it is high. Over and above this, you have super thermal resistant aluminum alloy, ZTAI. They are made of aluminum mixed with the whole, uh, the line itself is made of aluminum mixed with zirconium. And they're operated at temperatures of 200 degrees centigrade and above. And it's uh, allowable current is also very high. It's almost twice as much compared to uh, aluminum. And uh, this is also uh, being viewed as a replacement for ACSR. Okay, so uh, you can, replace this without changing the existing towers. Next, you have one more material, GZTA CSR. So these have a special construction. So you have a small gap, which is filled with grease between the steel core and the thermal resistant aluminum zirconium alloy. Okay, so I have the steel reinforcement. And I also have the aluminum zirconium alloy. And in between, you just see here, you can see in the figure I've shown with yellow. So in the center one is galvanized steel. So center one is galvanized steel. And then the outer are aluminum alloy. So in between the steel and the aluminum alloy, you have some grease. There is a gap. The gap is filled with grease. So this grease avoids the friction between the uh, steel core and the aluminum alloy. And you can move it independently. It's like having a tube, you know, with this grease, you can move them uh, independently. And they are also capable of being operated at uh, around 210 degrees centigrade and above. And they also have double the current carrying capacity and they're not very expensive. And so this is also a good replacement for ACSR. Clear? So you saw, I, I, I gave you almost eight or 10 different kinds of uh, conductor materials available. And uh, again, very popular are bundled conductors. So these bundled conductors, they will have more than one conductor per phase. See, normally in the three-phase system, if I ask you how many conductors are there, you will say three conductors, R, Y, B. 
So in a bundled conductor, there is more than one conductor per phase. So the current is split. The current is split. So each of this current conductor itself may be stranded. So don't confuse the conductor with the strand. Okay, the strand is within a conductor. So, uh, so I have one single conductor. This may have strands, like how I showed you the figures. Now, instead of one, I'll have two, right? It is like two parallel and both will be of the same face. They'll be carrying current of the same face. So the current will be split, right? So up to 230 kV, you can use stranded or round conductors, but for voltages more than 230 kV, bundled conductors are uh, good because these round conductors are found to uh, increase corona at higher voltages. And therefore, bundled conductors are uh, becoming, uh, have become very popular. So you just see here the figures I have shown. Okay. So here I have four conductors and uh, all, are, all are of the, all are carrying current of the same phase. So I, I have to secure them now. These are called as spacers. So they're sec secured. Uh, otherwise they will swing. Otherwise they will swing and you know, they may hit each other. So in between the lines at suitable uh, distances, you will have spacers. And this is another one. Here I have two conductors. Here I have four conductors per phase. And here also I have four conductors. You may have three conductors per phase. So there are different designs. You can have two, you can have three, you can have four, you can have six located like a hexagon. And these spacers give them strength and hold them together, preventing them to come in contact with each other. So bundled conductors have many advantages. They have lesser skin effect, and so they can carry more current and uh, they give improved stability. Um, and so they're widely uh, preferred for high voltages. You can see here, the bundle conductors have uh, less reactance due to more GMD. GMD is the geometric mean diameter distance. So you will, you will see this in the second unit. So this will reduce the voltage drop in the line. So the voltage profile improves. improves. And the voltage gradient is reduced. Gradient means the change in the voltage that is reduced. And uh, this in turn, the reduction in the voltage gradient will reduce the corona loss. And uh, therefore, once you reduce corona loss, the interference also will reduce. The radio interference will also reduce. And since losses are reduced, the transmission efficiency will improve. And it gives you, because the reactance is lesser, the reactance is lesser, it will give you improved power transfer capability. Now, when I use a single conductor, I have the problem of skin effect. I told you in the previous session, what is skin effect? Skin effect is the you know, reduction in, in the effective area because the current tends to confine uh, to the uh, surface. So this can be reduced. The skin effect is reduced using uh, bundled conductors. And since I have more conductors, the surface area is um, increased. If the surface area increases, the resistance will reduce and therefore the resistive losses uh, reduces. And the voltage regulation is improved. Regulation, I told you, is the difference between the sending end and receiving end voltage expressed as a percentage of the sending end voltage. So since the reactance drop reduces, the regulation also improves. Okay, so these are all many, many advantages of bundled conductors. So in this session, uh, we saw uh, uh, about the different conductors, uh, what are the material options we have. So you can choose the suitable conductor based on the weather conditions. What is the voltage level? What is the power level? Because when the powers are higher, currents will be more and you need thermally resistant uh, materials and so on. So we have a wide option today. And then we saw there are different, again, materials used for the supporting structures. You can have wood, you can have steel, you can have concrete. Um, so uh, all these are very important for designing the uh, transmission system.